Today on the Missionary Coach Show, we'll be talking about Matthew 5, verse 5, that says, The blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So serving in full-time missions since 1999, I'm your missionary coach, Bill Hutchison. Thanks for tuning in. I've always kind of taken for granted those verses that says, Blessed are the meek, uh, for they shall inherit the earth. Um, but honestly, I've never given a lot of thought to it. Uh, this is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And as he's, he's sharing with the disciples and the people around him, that's one of the things that he says. And it's actually, if you think about it, quite a profound statement, especially if you think about it as the way that we typically think of as meek. Uh, you know, the way that I think of someone as meek is someone who's kind of weak, someone who's cowardly, uh, someone that's trying to hide from the reality uh, that's before him, and someone, like I said, who's, he's, someone's a coward. Uh, now, Dr. Jordan Peterson is a clinical psychologist and a professor in Canada. Uh, he really recently released a book called um, 12 Rules of Life, and he has a different definition of meek. Uh, he explains it very differently than how I've thought of it before. Now, his definition of meek is someone who chooses to withhold their strength for the sake of peace, uh, someone who's strong, competent, and armed for the world. Um, now, I'll let him describe it to you, how he, how he interprets that verse. The New Testament, the meek shall inherit the earth. i got to look at my phone for a sec here, because I don't know what time it is. There's a line in the New Testament that says, and it's in the Sermon on the Mount, it says, the meek shall inherit the earth. And that, I already, that line always bothered me. I thought, no way, that's not, that, that's not right. Meek can't be the right word. So when I was doing the story of Noah and talking about the Sermon on the Mount, I spent a bunch of time looking at commentaries on that line, looking at the roots, the, you know, the Greek roots and the Hebrew roots, and trying to figure out what that meant. And it, meek does not mean meek. That's wrong. Here's what it means. Those who have weapons and know how to use them, but still keep them sheathed, will inherit the earth. Jesus. That's a lot different, man. It's a lot better, right? Because the way it's normally, it's normally interpreted is, if you're so weak that you're harmless, then things will go well for you. It's like, no, that's not right. That's, and that's not, that can't be right. It doesn't fit with the narrative. It certainly doesn't fit with this narrative. Now, honestly, I really like that definition. Um, it adds a lot of uh, depth, a lot of excitement, and it adds just a lot of more substance to what it means to be meek. You know, it instills confidence in, in the way that Christ is commanding us and telling us to live our life here on earth. Uh, now, that said, it, to be honest, I've heard it a few times. I've listened to that quite a few times, but it sounded almost too good to be true. You know, it's such a, va uh, such a um, big deviation, I guess, from how I've always seen meek to be. Uh, so I thought instead of dismissing it or embracing it, I thought I'd actually do some research to see how accurate um, that is. Now, to start, I looked at different uh, translations about how they translated that verse. Uh, most translations do use the word meek. Uh, there's a few that are different. The Holman Christian Standard Bible says the, the gentle are blessed, for they will inherit the earth. And the Christian Standard Bible says that blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. So there's a couple of different definitions, a diff, uh, couple of different differences. There we go. There's a mess of words. Some differences in, in our translations. Um, so I thought I'd look more specifically at that word, um, meek. Uh, so if we look at the specific word, uh, the word in the original Greek is praus. Uh, now there's a few different definitions that can be found for that word. Uh, they include gentle or gentleness, uh, humble, can also mean a horse that's been broken or a horse that's been trained for battle. Uh, could be a calm temper of mind, uh, not easily provoked, and also a gentleness of strength. Uh, now, the Webster Dictionary defines meek as mild of temper, soft, gentle, not easily provoked or irritated, yielding, given to forbearance under injuries. Uh, it can also mean appropriate, humble in an evangelical sense, uh, meaning being submissive to the divine will, not proud, self-sufficient, or refractory, not peevish and apt to complain of divine 
uh, dispensations. There's lexicon defines it as mildness of disposition, gentleness of spirit, meekness. And then also helps word studies, uh, says displaying the right blend of force and reserve, which they call gentleness, and also avoids unnecessary harshness, yet without compromising or being slow to use unnecessary force. Now, I thought to continue to understand what is meant by meekness and what Jesus means when he tells us to be meek, I thought I'd look at other words that other ways that meek is used in the in the Bible. So Matthew 11, verse 29, Christ says, Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest to your souls. Another translation of that says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. James 3, verse 13 says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his work are done, his works are done in meekness of wisdom. Number 12, verse 3 says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And then Psalm 37, verse 11, which is the verse that many believe Christ was quoting, uh, referencing back to in Matthew 5, verse 5, says, But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Now, you know, what can we kind of deduce? What can we understand based upon how meek was used in other verses? So Jesus describes himself as meek. Now, I don't think any Christian believer out there would ever define Christ as being weak or cowardly or not sufficient for the task. You know, he is someone of infinite power and infinite wisdom, but he has completely and utterly submitted himself to the will of the Father. I mean, that that's a pretty, pretty powerful statement right there about what Christ meant when he said meek. We're also told in a uh, verse in James, uh, we're told to act out of meekness of wisdom, inferring that there must be wisdom and competence for there to be true meekness. Moses, you know, this is the man who led the Israelites out of Egypt, who stood up to Pharaoh. He led them through the desert, and he's called very meek. And in Psalm 37, it talks about the people who inherit the earth, which are called meek. It includes people who submit themselves to the Lord, people who petition the Lord, are not envious of the prosperous, and also people who wait on the Lord rather than turning to violence or evil schemes. I thought I'd continue my research and I um, looked at a few different commentaries that were out there. Uh, the David Gazoot commentary states that blessed are the meek. In the vocabulary of the ancient Greek language, the meek person was not passive or easily pushed around, but rather the main idea behind the word meek was strength under control like a strong stallion that was trained to do the job instead of running wild. Uh, that same commentary also says that to be meek means to show willingness to submit and work under proper authority. Also shows a willingness to disregard one's own rights and privileges. Now, so after all of that, I think that doc I can honestly say that Dr. Peterson's assessment of Matthew 5 verse 5 is pretty spot on. Now, you know, we're not called to be weak or cowardly, but rather... Christ in saying the meek shall inherit the earth says that we're to be called strong, we're to be called competent. We need to be confident and we need to be trained. We need to, you know, be all that God wants us to be. We need to be, um, <laughs> Dr. Peterson will say it in the next, we need to be monsters, not, but we have to control it. We have to, we have to submit ourselves to Christ. We need to have all of the strength that we can possibly muster, but then we need to put it under God's will. We need to submit ourselves to him to use that strength when he commands us to because we're submitted to him we're committed submitted to something more powerful than ourself and our own will but rather to christ's will and, and what god commands us to do now that that's you know pretty powerful and it's something that i think should be exciting for us you know what does it mean to be meek well it means to know what we're doing to know what we're on about uh so i'm going to leave it there Say thank you so much for listening. If you head over to missionarycoach.org, uh, you can comment on this. You can uh, subscribe, support my work in Youth of the Mission. Uh, you can also hear other episodes of the Missionary Coach Show. So thank you very much for listening. Um, now that I've kind of expanded about how, you know, what I believe Christ meant, 
and he's said to be meek. Um, I'll leave you with another, um, I'll leave you with Dr. Jordan Peterson with an interview with Joe Rogan about, you know, what it means to be meek. So thank you so much for listening. Well, the, I, the other thing I've been telling young men is that, and, and this is something I think that you could relate to tremendously, is I, I read this New Testament line, well, decades ago, and I, I could never understand it. It's the line is, the meek shall inherit the earth. And I thought, there's something wrong with that, that line. It just doesn't make sense to me. Meek just doesn't seem to me to be a moral virtue. And so I did a series of biblical lectures this year, like 15 of them, and that was also a weird little experience that we can talk about. But I was looking through the these these sayings, these maxims, and that was one of them, the meek shall inherit the earth. But I've been using this site called Bible Hub, and it's very interesting. It's very it's organized very interesting. So you have a biblical line, and then they they have like three pages of commentary on each line. And so because people have commented on every verse in the Bible, like to the to degree that's almost unimaginable. So you can look and see all the interpretations and all the translations and get some sense of what the gen, genuine meaning might be. And the line, the meek shall inherit the earth, meek is not a good translation, or the word has moved in the 300 years or so, 300 years or so since it was translated. What it means is this, those who have swords and know how to use them, but keep them sheathed, will inherit the world. And that's mm. another thing I've been telling. Yeah, no kidding. That's, that's a lot a different. Big man. Difference. That's a big difference. It's so great. And so, like one of the things I tell young men, well, and young women as well, but the young men really need to hear this more. I think is that you should be a monster. You know, because everyone says, well, you should be harmless, virtuous. You shouldn't do anyone any harm. You should sheath your competitive instinct. You shouldn't try to win. You know, you you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat and all of that. It's like no, wrong. You should be a monster, an absolute monster, and then you should learn how to control it. Do you know the expression, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war? Right, right, exactly. That's exactly it.